if you want easy to do, inexpensive, colorful collage papers that you're going to love using on your art journal pages and your mixed media pieces, you need to do this. What am I talking about? Coffee filter collage papers. Here, these ones are standard 12 cup coffee filters. They measure eight, eight inches in diameter, but you can get the super size ones at nine and a half inches. And if you can't find these anywhere else, I know Nitty's Napkins sells them. I'll put a link in the description box. That gives you a lot more surface area for the work that you do. But don't forget, you can also use the cone filters. They are a different, slightly different material. They collage differently. So you're going to want to use some of those. What else are you going to need for this stash builder? A spray bottle with water and an assortment of makeup sponges to put on paint. Speaking of paint, I'm using medium bodied, my Liquitex Basics Artist Loft paint. You can use craft paint and I'm going to travel around the color wheel and I'm going to do all sorts of colors because I really want to build my stash. But you could do one set of colors at a time and limit that. You're also going to need an assortment of stencils, whatever size works and some mark making tools. I also have some packaging from stencils that I'm going to put the coffee filters on when they're wet to let them dry so I can get them off my surface. Now I'm working on a glass tabletop, but you can use a crafting mat there. So here's the step. This first one is a little slower and I will speed up the rest in the video. Spray the water on and then apply paint to the coffee filter. There's no magic here. You want a good amount of coffee filter. They tend to write to dry a little bit duller, not as bright. I like to mix colors right on the coffee filter and when it's wet it blends and you get that watercolory look that I absolutely love. Now when you collage with this on your art journal pages the colors tend to brighten once you've glued them down with the matte medium. It's one of my favorite collage papers to use. So I am just mixing it right on the coffee filter as I go. I want to have some variation on here. My makeup sponge is a little wet as well. And that just makes the paint go on a lot quicker. And you'll notice that I'm doing it, this in multiples of three. If I'm pulling out the colors, I don't want to just make one. That's a lot of extra effort. And for stash builders, you want to do kind of assembly line kind of thinking. So here, speaking of the color wheel, we are using colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Those are anaglas colors and they will mix nicely. You want to avoid mixing wet on wet the colors that are across from what colors you're using. You can dry the coffee filter and then put it on successfully and they will look amazing. Now you can stop at any point. In fact, sometimes I like to have some that are basically left at this stage in my stash. I know that I can always add things later on and I like to have some, some with less pattern to go with the ones that have more pattern. On this one, instead of adding yellow, I'm adding Prussian blue. Now, when you use these, you may be using them whole 
as a background or you may be ripping them apart. Now we get to add some marks. One of my favorite and fastest ways to do this is using stencils, whether they're 12 inch, eight inch, six inch, all the stencils that I'm using here are from the Crafters Workshop. And there is a link to their Shopify store in the description box and a coupon code. I'll try to remember to list some of my favorite stencils in the, in the description box, but please use what you have. This is diamond plate. The other one was called knitted stitching. Here I'm putting white gesso through the stencil. Now the net, the coffee filter is still wet. So when I stencil on here, it is going to wick out a little bit. You're not getting precise stenciling. And I like that effect. If you want precise stenciling, then you need to let it dry. Here I'm using Naples yellow against the cadmium red background. And again, we're using the knitted stitch or knitted stitching 12 inch stencil. Sometimes you wanna cover the whole thing with the pattern. Sometimes you're just going to do different parts. One of the fun things about doing a stash builder like this is you just let creativity flow. And sometimes you're going to end up with something so absolutely wonderful. You're going to want to duplicate it on purpose. Now I'm using a shelf liner and I'm putting some of the Prussian blue on this coffee filter. It's just adding a little bit of a detail and then I'm putting it on the packaging and moving it off to another area to dry. You don't want to leave this on your tabletop to, to, um, to dry as it will stick. And as I found out, if it does that, if, if it dries before you remove it, you just spray it with water, let the water soak in and it will release. Here I'm using a sink liner and putting in just white gesso and stamping on top. So you can see any kind of mark maker, DIY or stamp will work. Here I'm adding cadmium red and brilliant purple. I just like that color combo. When I'm working with a color, I would go red with yellow, red with green, red with blue, red with purple, and I would have varieties because then when I am doing a page, I have all those options and that variety in my stash. This one's called Petal Something and I'm just stenciling it on with a mixture of the purple paint and white. And then I'm using this dot stamp, one of my favorites, and I think it's purple there, stamping on it. If you see color combinations that you like, try those. Every time you do a different session, you're gonna pull different stencils, you're gonna be inspired differently, pick different colors, and you'll get a whole lot of variety in your stash. Here I'm putting turquoise on top, just a little bit. And these are my DIY foam stamps. You could use the tops of bottles. Pretty much anything to make marks. This is a trivet and it has a honeycomb pattern in it, so I'm going to use that. While I'm kind of mixing it up in this video using the stencils and the stamps at the same time and splattering, if I was doing this not on camera, I might just do all the base color and the stenciling, let those dry and then pull them back and then do any of the stamping and the splattering.
This is white gesso. And makes it for an absolutely lovely collage paper. And I'm splattering with gold. I do like having these collage papers with that little bit of gold. It just makes them so special when you use them on your art journal pages. So here's the cone filters. Add water, it takes up a little bit more. They're a little bit heavier and then paint. Really, the process is identical. Here I'm adding light blue permanent to it. Have fun and experiment. If it goes terribly wrong and you make it and it's absolutely ugly as in you have to throw it out and that has yet to happen to me, it is only a coffee filter. You have not invested a lot of money or time on it. So experiment, have fun playing with color. Matting different greens here. Another TCW stencil. I'm putting green through it. You'll see me using some stamps or stencils again and again. Those obviously are my favorites and I get a lot of use out of them. This is a great time to experiment with stencils that are new, see what they look like, or stencils that you hardly use. Get some use out of them. Here, instead of yellow and green, I went with orange. And then I'm adding some red. We're definitely in the warm zone. But again, all those colors, if you look on the color wheel, are next to each other on the color wheel. So wet on wet, they're going to look fine. I wanna add some red to the green ones, so I'm splattering with the red. Adding a little bit of detail, a little bit of color. And here's splattering with black. I better be careful the way I splatter. There'll be splatter on the walls again. Honeycomb stencil or stamp. I'm stamping with red. Not loving it, but you know what? By when I rip this up to use as a collage paper, it won't matter. It'll look lovely. So these ones are partially dry, and I thought I'd show you some stamping that I do. And this is what I would do. If I would do a whole session and and do get most of the stuff on, then I'm going to use my five by seven gel plate use the brayer to put the paint, the black paint or white paint on, or whatever color paint, quite honestly, on it, and then stamp with it. And then I would go through whatever coffee filters I wanna add this script stamp with. And once I'm done with the script stamp, I can wash off the acrylic paint and move on to another stamp and add some details. This kind of works instead of getting out stamps and stencils and, and, and. The same thing. I would put all, once they all stamped and all stenciled out, I would put multiples of them out on my top of my desk and splatter them with whatever color. So I'm not cleaning the splatter brush or five times. Think assembly line. Yum, I'm loving it. This is Coastal Escape. It's a lovely stencil or stamp, but I, I don't think you can get it anymore. And so I'm just going through the ones that are dry and adding whatever stamping. And a lot of my stamps are a smaller scale and I like to incorporate that on. Here, this is a heart stamp, and I'm putting some black on there. It's not really giving me 
the effect that I want. So I clean off the stamp and the brayer and I put white on with a makeup sponge. That's giving a lot of contrast and I'm, I'm liking it a lot better. Remember, you can stamp with any color acrylic paint. If you're using your stamps though, you're going to make sure that you wash them to get that acrylic paint off. So we're just gonna continue down the road here and I'm going to do some yellow, yellow with orange. And again, mixing it wet on wet. I'm not even changing the makeup sponge when I do colors. This is a sink liner and I'm just putting on red paint and using it as a stamp. This is Big Wreath, and I love the greenery or the botanical feel of that one. Now again, I remind you, you can leave the stem, this coffee filter at any stage. This is Screen View, one of my favorite stencils using with coffee filters or anything. Now here I want some dark navy dark purple and i find that when they dry they often leave some clear areas so you may need to flip it over and add more color and i like to let it dry before i add any other stamping on it i find that because it it kind of absorbs together i don't want it to blend So here I'm adding dioxazine purple. I think I have some white gesso on the brush, adding a bit of Prussian blue. And then this onion blossom stencil, I'm just using white gesso, or you could use white acrylic paint. I just have the gesso that's close at hand. And then I'm using the same stencil and stenciling with the Prussian blue. I'm gonna love using that one. So now that I have that color out and I'm liking that color combination, I'm going to do more of them. After all, this is a stash builder. Using this peacock feathers, or actually this is Art Deco leaves. Reminds me of peacock feathers and I'm using the same colors that were in the background on top. And then, oof, got a splatter with gold. This one, all I'm gonna do is splatter with gold. Looks like a galaxy to me. You can clean up your area with the coffee filters and keep going. Every once in a while when I'm switching colors, I do take the time to clean everything, put the paints away and get them out. But you could do a session where you're just gonna basically do three or four colors. Put it away, move on. Here I'm using some of my DIY foam stamps. I'm not getting perfect stamping, but that's okay. We just want some interesting marks. Remember, a lot of this collage paper, you're going to end up ripping it apart. You don't see it as a whole. And because you've done it with your own mark makers or the stencils, different combinations, it's really one of a kind. So if you like something you've done, probably a good, good, good uh, piece of advice would be Duplicate it right now when you know which what colors you've used and what stamps and everything you've used. I am always short of green and blue for the coffee filters, so I'm just going to make a whole bunch extra. I'm using yellow green and hooker's green and again, mixing it up. I'm using Prussian blue on top of the green and I've discovered that makes a lovely dark green and 
So everything you learn about how colors go together or what you like, you can use the next time on purpose. Right now it's about color play, creative play. Use different size stencils for different scales. I'm adding the brown to this green. Because I know when it goes to using it for collaging, if I'm doing flowers or florals, that's just going to look lovely. That's going to add those details that are just going to make it wonderful collage paper. And there's that screen view again. Cleaning up my desktop with the napkins or with the coffee filters and doing more green. If you use a lot of reds or you use a lot of pinks, then do a lot of those. At the end of the video, I will be showing all a close-up of the finished dried coffee filters and giving you some storage tips. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and collect the select the option to be notified of upcoming videos by clicking on the bell. I moved from green and I'm using quinacridone magenta here as the base. Thought I wanted a little bit tone on tone, a little darker color. That wasn't working, so I went light. This is linked tiles. Oh, I just love that. Isn't that a pretty collage paper? All I did is add stencils to it. Sometimes you don't have to add a lot and it just makes it wonderful. I love using Bright Aqua on Quinacridone Magenta. If you want more opaque color, let the coffee filter dry. This is Circle I can't remember. Again, I will list them in the description box if I can remember them. Here's the Bright Aqua with the Quinacridone Magenta. Together they make a nice purple. This stencil I love, but it has, has been discontinued. Add as few or as many layers as you want. Have fun. And now I'm splattering with white. And then, well, you know, I need to splatter with gold. Here's some more coffee filters that I put a base coat of magenta. And then I'm stenciling on. I wanted a darker burgundy, wasn't happening. Eh, again, so I'm going with white. There I have a darker purpley pinky color. Then I decide, you know what would happen if I put Naples yellow on there? And I'm loving that color. It's such a warm, rich one. That's going to make a good addition on an art journal page. So once you find something you like, you're going to do more of it. So I added it there. Really warms up that pink. This is called Petal Splash. I remembered that I like Naples yellow with Prussian blue. Together they make a beautiful teal. So I'm mixing those right on the coffee filter and you'll see the wonderful colors that 
that comes when I blend them together. Here I'm using the larger coffee filters. And as I said, you can purchase these if you don't want to buy a whole bulk amount of them. They're kind of for restaurants and stuff. And Ninny's napkins. So I'm using the same colors. I'm using Prussian blue and the Naples yellow to stencil the same pattern on. And because it's wet, you get that diffused look that I absolutely, absolutely love. So they're all dry, so let's go through them and see all of them. How will I use these? Some I will use to make a background on a smaller page. If I really like a pattern, I can try to duplicate it and make another one so that I can cover a larger art journal page. These make great backgrounds for cards, or you can rip them up and use bits of them on an art journal page. If you like one, like I love the this one on the background, I might take inspiration for it and create a background right on an art journal page, not using the, using the coffee filter, but just using the idea that I came up with in this creative session. Here's another one that I absolutely love, I think would make a perfect background. So if I wanted it on a nine by 12 page, I could look at the stenciling that I did, look at the colors and try to duplicate that. Mix and match. Some of these I might add some stamping or stenciling when I go to use them on a page, I may want to insert another color to make it fit better. And again, you can mix and match with other scrapbook papers and other things that you have. Remember, you could use it as an Insta background. You can rip it up and do the rip a strip kind of starting for an art journal page, or you can make embellishments out of this and use. So I have lots of green because I want, you know, if I'm collaging flowers and greenery, I will use some of these and then with the patterning, they just look spectacular. I have all my darks that I just left as dark, then I can, Add whatever color whenever I want it. This one, you know, doesn't look overly exciting, but you pair it up with a dark and suddenly it has new life. Every time you go and do a session of this stash builder on the coffee filters, you're going to do something slightly different. You're going to use different stencils or different colors. You're inspired differently and you'll get a whole different feel of collage papers. And there, I might combine, have this as a dark background and use this. If you watch my channel, you'll see me using coffee filters. So what next? Well, how do I store them? Basically, I'm going to sort them primarily on, by color. So if I have, you know, and if it's halfway in between, it doesn't matter. I, it, you know, I might put all of these into red. I have my filing system. 
my hanging file system and it's color coded. And what I have is a separate folder in there and I have my red ones, my coffee filters I keep in here. It just keeps them all in one place. Alternatively, you could take all of these coffee filters, if you're using this a lot, and just put all your coffee filters, if this is all you have, into one of these, and then keep this close at hand and pull out every time you're doing a page and start really using them. Now I said, this is how I've kept them, in the folders, just in the front of the folder like that. But I'm thinking I'm going to upgrade because I want it a little more accessible. So what I'm going to use is this Pendaflex, and I will link this. I used to put my gel prints in here before I got so many. So it is color coordinated. So what I think I'm going to do moving forward is put these in here. So this is just going to be my, so we have red and orange. So this is just going to be my coffee filters. So then we have pinks. And corals and then this hangs on the back and I'll, I'll insert a picture on the back of my studio door You can see, as I'm doing this, you can see other sessions. I've grabbed other stencils, other colors, and you get a very, very different look or feel. So I'm just going to go through my files and upgrade my system, and this now will be just for my coffee filter collage papers.